Yo, what's poppin' guys? Kai's again today. Guys, I just want to talk about the latest episode of ReZero. Now, first things first, right? ReZero, I'm a little bit biased. It's one of my absolute favorite anime of all time, okay? It's literally, it's in my top five, right? In my top five, easy peasy. I love ReZero. I'm a huge, huge fan of it, okay? So that's out of the way. Season two, though. This new episode, episode 10, just came out. Just came out. Guys, I literally just finished watching it, and I, it's crazy. Like, it absolutely took my breath away. I, I was just sitting there, just watching the episode, like my jaw was like on the floor, okay? My jaw was on the floor. I don't know what else to say. Some crazy stuff happened, okay? So, non-spoiler version, right? Non-spoiler TLDR. Season 2 is very, very amazing, right? If you haven't, if you're not caught up, right? If you haven't seen the newest episode, definitely go watch it. If you haven't seen Season 2, or if you don't even, haven't even seen ReZero at all, right? Go watch it, absolutely. Go watch ReZero. It is amazing, again, one of my favorite anime of all time. Yeah, I do like Isekai, right? It, in my opinion, it's the best Isekai, okay? It's my favorite Isekai, my favorite one. To me, it's the best one out there right now, at least in anime. There's a ton of great manga, right? But in terms of anime, 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 ReZero is my favorite Isekai, okay? So go ahead, guys, just go watch it. Go watch it now, okay? Now... Spoilers, right? Spoilers. The fights. Oh my god, those fights were magnificent. We had not just one, right? Not just one fight going on. We had multiple fights. Multiple fights. Each of them were just stunning, right? You had the fight with Elsa and Garfield. Oh my god, that was... That was insane, right? Like, you had, you know... Was, in the, even that fight was like two fights in one. It was, you know, Elsa's sister... And Garfield's sister fighting each other, right? And then, of course, them fighting themselves, and then they're all fighting together, and there's a big monsters, and, and then Garfield becomes this big monster form, and it's crazy. It's, it's crazy, okay? Like, I, I, I... Yes, okay? I love it so much. I loved it so much. I loved the tension between Elsa and Garfield. I loved Elsa's little bit of backstory, right? She revealed a little bit of her history about herself, about her as a young girl, and wow, she started, you know, how she started acting like the crazy psycho girl she is, right? We found that out about her too. And then Garfield, they're, they're little, they're, <laughs> Garfield telling her basically F off. That was, that was great. That was absolutely great. I love their relationship together. I love, I love that. Not saying that, like the relationships of them being together, right? I'm absolutely not trying to ship them or anything. That's not what I'm saying. But I love, I love their interactions, right? I love their interactions, the way they interact with each other as characters. That was phenomenal. That was absolutely phenomenal. Superbly done. Very superbly done with the battle, the dialogue, all of that interwoven so well, so intricately. That was great. Okay, that was great. You could really see like Garfield develop as a character, and also both of them developed extremely well. Both of them, you saw, you know, the advances characters. It was phenomenal. Stunning, right? And that's just part of it, right? You also had the stuff going on with Amelia. That was great. She saw, you know, all the possible futures, but of course she stood strong. Now, I would say the part of Amelia this episode was probably the weakest part of the episode, right? Again, amazing episode. But it was the weakest part because the past trials, you know, the, the first trial and the second trial, they were more in depth, right? You got to see more characterization of Emilia, got to see her stand up and overcome the odds and overcome the difficulties and the hardships. The third trial, okay, the third trial was a bit lackluster. It's just kind of, she heard a bunch of voices, it's like, oh, bad stuff's gonna happen, bad stuff, bad stuff, bad stuff, and she's just kind of like, oh, yeah, well, I know it's not necessarily gonna happen, but it might, and because it might not happen, well, oh, well, I'm not sad, okay? I'm not sad at all. So, yeah, that... The trial wasn't really that much. It was kind of a, a little just because she just kind of brushed it off, right? She just brushed off the entire third trial, which again, it makes sense, right? Because she'd already overcome the previous two trials. She'd overcome herself, right? That was a big thing. She was so scared. She was so terrified. She was alone. She was sad. And then because of Subaru and all of her friends, all of her allies, she finally started to have confidence and courage in herself and have strength in her own actions. She became strong. And this season, right? In this season, she became a very, very strong character. And before, she was very weak. And so it makes sense that the third trial didn't need much because she'd already had that arc. She didn't need to go through the arc again, right? She'd already gone through her little arc of finding herself, finding her inner strength, and becoming a powerful person. 
So, yes, it makes sense. But that doesn't take away from the fact that it was the weakest part of the episode. That's not saying it's bad. It's just saying the rest of the episode was so amazing that that part was kind of like, eh. But the revelation, though, right? Is that is that witch? The witch we saw in, <laughs> in Ekidana's realm? Is that... Is that her mother? I mean, if, uh, let me know in the comments, right, if I'm not reading into this correctly. Let me know if if I've taken the situation the wrong way. But from my understanding, that witch that told her not to turn around, right? Don't look at, don't turn around. It's best if you don't turn around, right? That, that, is that, Amel is that Amelia's mother? Because she started crying when she said that Mother Fortuna was her mother. And you can see the emotion in her as she turned around, gave her a hug before forcing her out the door, telling her that she can't tell her anything. And Amelia seemed to understand this. She, she's not dumb, right? Amelia is definitely not a dumb character. She recognizes. I feel like the implication was, of course, that that character is Amelia's mother. Again, let me know if I'm wrong. Maybe I've read into this the wrong way, but yeah, that's that's what I got out of that. Okay. So that was that was superb as well. Very nice. That was. That was great, okay? That little interaction right there was phenomenal. Again, the trial itself is weak, but after the trial, that was a nice bit for Amelia to kind of express herself a bit more and find out some cool information, right? And us as the audience as well, we found out some, at least we could theorize about some cool information. I feel like it's pretty, pretty obvious, but again, I could be wrong, right? So let me know. But the last part I really want to talk about, right? The last part I really want to talk about has to do with Rosewall and Ram, right? Ramu, <laughs> right? So... That is a very, very interesting reveal. Of course, you know, I've, we've, this is already spoilers. <laughs> Ram, she really likes... She's in love with Roserol, right? She's in love with him. She loves him. And I was not expecting that. I, I knew that she cared for him in some capacity, right? I knew that she wanted to correct him. She wanted to save him, okay? I knew that much. But I was not expecting her to be in love with him, which makes things kind of interesting, kind of awkward, because, of course, Roserol loves Ekidona. Okay? He loves her. So you got a little bit of a love triangle going on now. A little, a little bit of a love centipede? A love... I don't know. I don't know what to call it, right? But you got a love something going on. There's, there's some love going on, right? And things are getting complicated. And it's going to be interesting to see how this unfolds. Of course, Rem already got rejected. Is Rem going to be, you know, rejected too? That would be very sad. That would, that would just be sad, right? Because both of them are such good girls. They deserve the best. And honestly, I really love Ram, right? Ram is a really cool character. I, I mean, I think she's kind of underrated, right? Because in the first season, everyone was simping over Ram. I mean, Ram was never my waifu in the show. She was never best girl to me. I was always, I love Amelia. But I really like Ram as well. Ram is a very close second to me. Actually, I don't know. She may be my favorite now. Ram is, is a great character. Absolutely love her. And I'm really interested to see how this love you know this confession plays out i'm interested to see how that confession plays out and of course the very end of the episode ram burnt his black book she burnt rosewall's black book destroying it at least as far as we know so that could be interesting as well what is rosewall gonna do what is he gonna do now now that is it is like guiding source of wisdom right his connection to his love ekidona what is he gonna do now well i guess we're gonna have to find out right so this episode, basically, it's had a bunch of cool fights, had some uh, nice character development, some very, very interesting character interactions, and it's set up a lot of stuff that has to be explored in the future for us as the audience to just find out, right? I'm sure, you know, people already know from the light novels, hey, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, yada, yada, yada. But as an anime only watcher for this particular series, I'm very interested to see what happens. So please, yeah, that... That's it, that's it for this episode, right? So, you know, if you found this video entertaining, enjoyable, informative, please smash the like button, subscribe. But yeah, that is it for today. Kai Zerker out. Peace and booyah.